Hello, my name is Keetron Evans and I'm going to be showing you the Sandworm APT. Now, this particular uh, exercise and group that we're gonna be emulating here and showing you exercises on was one of the most prevalent and prominent groups as far as APT groups all the way from 2009 up to now. They're still pretty prevalent. They have a lot of stuff out there going on right now. Um, one of the things that we wanna make sure we point out again is that with this particular lab, as is the case with all of our cyber range labs, it's mapped directly to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. This deals with client execution, uh, client exploitation, supply chain exploitation, and several others that are tied directly to this specific exercise. So let's jump right into the lab and get the work with it and let you see how it looks. All right. So one of the first things we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually trojanize a deb file, which is basically uh, just like an installation file. If you can imagine you, you're on your Windows machine, you go download a file from the internet that you can double click and install something. Well, a deb file is a Debian equivalent of that. And since we're working with Kali Linux here, which runs on top of Debian, deb, deb files are kind of the best thing to do that with. So we're gonna start off by just simply making a directory uh, we'll go ahead and open that machine up here and open a prompt. And I'm just going to make the screen a little bit bigger for you. And we're simply going to make a directory and I'm just copying that to the clipboard. Kind of want you to see that you have that option as well. Then we're going to CD to that directory that we just made and I'll just type that out. And then we're gonna depackage this Debian file here. If I can get my paste to work. All right, so one of the key things and one of the things that we uh, really like about the way we designed this is if you notice, the minute you finish this one task out of 11, now this lab, might take you 25, 30 minutes to finish. So I won't go through all of it. I'll save some for you to jump over into the range and play with yourself for the end here. But if you notice after you finish each step, you know, or each groups of task, it actually gives you a green check mark to let you know that you've completed that task. And now we're going to move on to step two. Now in step two, we're going to, um, in this new director, we'll create a file so we can package our application. So we're going to uh, make a directory named work. And in that directory, and one of the things I wanna point out is we can go back and forth here. Like you can navigate back and forth between uh, the different machines that you're working with or the different steps that you're working on. And what we're gonna be doing now is basically creating another directory here and we're gonna be putting inside that directory an actual uh, file here. So let's go ahead and open up a prompt. Now with this, one of the things is, is we don't, we really don't try to limit you to a specific method here on how you format your screen. You can drag this around and resize stuff, resize your text and all that, uh, whatever works for you. So now we've got both machines up and running here. Uh, we're gonna go back to our Cali. We're gonna make that directory name work Debian like so and then we're going to CD to that directory if I can get my caps lock to go off there we go And then we're gonna create a file here. We're gonna use just a text editor. We can use Vim, VI, or G editor, whatever which you wanted to use as far as a text editor. But we're gonna use Nano here. So we're gonna just open up Nano Control. And since this file doesn't already exist, you're effectively creating it when you open it up in Nano there. Now, another thing is you could type all these strings out that's in this file, or you could again use the copy option here and just go over and paste it directly into Nano like so. And now you've essentially created a file. 
one of the cool things about the way our labs are set up is if you, for example, let's say you didn't know how to copy and paste something into Nano or you didn't know how to even open Nano. Well, there is actually um, the hint button here. So if you click on need a hint, it actually walks you through more details about what we're doing. Now, keep in mind, this is an advanced adversary tactics lab that's mapped to the MITRE attack framework. So it's really meant for or designed around the concept of having someone with some experience already coming in here and working with this. However, we've built into the experience the ability for even a beginner to get in here and actually eventually get through the lab. They're gonna need a lot of hints. They're gonna have to click on need a hint a lot, but it's there if they wanna tackle it and they should be able to get through it. Um, that's one of the things that where we separate ourselves from, from other uh, types of cyber ranges. So we're gonna go ahead and actually close out um, this particular lab here or close out this particular file. So we're gonna basically tell Nano to save this. And now we've got our file created. And what you notice is the second we finished that, it gave us again the green check to let us know that we successfully completed that part of the exercise. So now we move on to the next step. We're gonna create a post installation file. Um, we're gonna create this file uh, basically the same way we did before. We're gonna use Nano to create it. We're gonna take this content right here and we're gonna put it into this file. Again, you could type it out or you could paste it like I did here. Then after you create this file, right, we're gonna control X to save it. Now again, saving out of it with control X is something that if you're a beginner, you wouldn't know that because maybe you're not comfortable or not used to the Linux command line, but we didn't put detailed instructions like that in here. This is where you'd again, go back to the need a hint or whatever the case may be to figure out how to do those basic things that aren't really related to the lab. Again, us trying to make sure that you can actually get through it. So we go ahead and say yes to save it. All right, now we're going to change permissions. In other words, if we want to be able to execute this, we have to give it the execute permission and we're gonna do that in Linux with this command right here. It's chmod, or you know, we're gonna basically modify the permissions here. And then notice once we've done all the tasks in here that it asks us to do, then it gives us the green check mark to let us know we're successful. All right, so now we're going to go into the steps of creating an actual payload. So the file that we've just created will be run after the installation. And it'll execute the file at a specific update location that you see listed there. Uh, and then we can create a reverse shell with MSF Venom, which is a tool that we use in the industry to create malicious malware of our own, uh, kind of like you become a malware author. Now, in this particular one, it actually gives you cautionary steps. Be sure to swap out attacker IP with your IP. That way you're actually putting something in there that can be made to come back. So first, let's make this directory. All right, we did that. Then we're gonna run the Venom command to create the actual executable. Well, here's where, again, we don't necessarily spell this out in detail, but what we're expecting is that you're advanced enough to realize that, okay, we have to change the attacker IP part here to be our IP because that's what the instruction said. Now this again opens up another part of where you have to be a little bit beyond basic because you gotta realize, okay, I gotta go and actually check and see what my IP is. In my case, my IP is uh, 172.26.41 is my actual IP. So I need to go ahead and put that in there in that command, in lieu of just saying, you know, attacker IP, I need to put my actual IP there. And that's what this note is telling you up here. Now, again, show hints and all that can help you. And even if that doesn't help you enough, what you can do is if you look at this screenshot, you click that, it blows it up full size so that you can see, hey, first we check to see what our IP address is. And you can see the order in which we did the commands here to actually make this work. So now the last step is to actually run the Venom command. 
to create the malicious binary. So we do that. Let's get to the end of the line here. So we execute that. And you have to be patient and give it a, a minute as it's going through and doing these things. So now you can see it created our malicious file and it says, hey, I created that binary and I saved it to this location, saved it to that update location there. Notice when I finished all those steps, it actually then gave me the green check mark and says, you're good to go. You've created your malicious file. Now we need to actually prepare the package. And then with that, when the malicious app is installed and reverse shell should be sent back to us, we need something that can actually grab that connection as it comes back. So to do that, what we're gonna do is set up a netcat listener. First step we're gonna do is actually CD to the temp directory. All right, and then we're gonna do a dpackage right here. All right, then we're going to CD. Then we're gonna do a move command. So we're gonna move the dev file that's in work to this other location here. And then we're gonna run this Python command here to stat to basically run this little HTTP server. So now it's listening and serving stuff out of this directory on port 80. And then in a different terminal, we're gonna run netcat. So they we point out here in a different terminal because we need you to understand that if you try to run it here, you're gonna kill the little web server that you just launched. So we have to go over to a different terminal and we'll use the second one that I pulled up earlier to check my IP. All right. And I'm gonna now have netcat listen on port 443. And notice again, when I've completed all those tasks, it gives me the green thumb. Now, one thing I want to point out is when I did these steps of creating like the Debian work directory and running Venom, notice I didn't particularly run them in the exact same order that it is in the screenshot, but I still got the green check mark. This is because the way that we've built these environments is it's really checking uh, to see that you got the task done that not so much that you type an exact command a certain way, because that's really not how we learn anyways. So as you can see here, as long as you got the steps done and all the things done that was supposed to be done, the order that you did them in didn't necessarily matter in this case. Now with some exercises, the order will matter, but in this one, we just wanted to make sure that you got all the things done. And then we move on to the next step where we're gonna trigger the exploit, all right? So to do that, um, we need to switch over to the victim machine or the target. So we're gonna to go to our target here. And again, I wanna make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm typing. Let's do it once more. All right, so I'm gonna do a wget, go to the student machine, which is the, meta, the uh, excuse me, the Cali machine that we're just working on and bring down this dev file. All right, notice it says, hey, I successfully bought down and saved that file for you. And then we're gonna depackage that dev file. This would be the same as if you installed a file, if this were a Windows environment, for those of you that are more familiar with Windows. So we go ahead and paste that command to do that depackage. And we can see it depackaged and did the install. All right, now, what you want to look for here and where the important part is, is if you go back to the original machine where we're listening, you will see that there is now a connection that came back from the other side. So now we can actually run commands on that victim machine, as you can see right here. And if we do what it says in the instructions, we come over here and do ID. It actually shows us that we're running as root. And from that point, we own this box and we can run any root privilege level commands that we like, and that is complete ownage. And what you just saw there 
was exactly one of the techniques that's used by the Sandworm APT group to do these types of things. And this maps nicely to four or five different MITRE ATT&CK framework uh, pieces there. Thank you for watching. And if you want to do exercises just like what I just showed you uh, on your own and practice and get good with it and see how these all map to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, then head on over to infosecinstitute.com slash range and practice with it and set up an account and you can do exactly what you just saw me do. Thanks for watching.